This is the top side of the carburetor, and I wanted to point out a few things uh, before we go ahead and throw the slide back in uh, you might want to take note of. First off, one of the first things we did, we pushed in our, our primary and secondary emulsifier tubes, where here they are. That's the, that's the main right there, the primary, and there's the secondary. So that's where they, they come through, and the gas actually sprays and squirts out of those into the, uh, so the Venturi right here. So I'll point those out to you. Uh, another thing I want to point out here, if you can watch the pick, I have it. You see the pick right there. This is the air inlet that actuates the slide coming off the very front of the carburetor. There's two holes here, and uh, when we actually check for proper slide operation, we're going to be blowing into it, and you can see how the slide work. A few more things. Uh, these little brass guys here are known as air bleeds. They allow air to come into the body of the carburetor and help the gas atomize, basically, down in the chamber with the emulsifier tubes. Uh, some versions of these carburetors, they're removable. This one that happened to be pressed in. In my, in my opinion, you really shouldn't take them out unless you absolutely have to. But you do need to clean them out. So these are a good candidate to uh, make sure you get a guitar string in there and there's no, uh, there's no debris or dirt in any of those, those parts there. Because uh, they need to be cleaned and uh, blown out with compressed air. And finally, we have this groove here. This is actually the groove where the, the diaphragm sits in. And uh, we're going to make sure we, we seal this up well when we put the diaphragm back in the carburetor. It also has an alignment notch here. Uh, this is relative to a, a, an original diaphragm that's in the carburetor. However, if you're using our, one of our replacement diaphragms, uh, part number 30, I'm sorry, 6034, um, it doesn't use a, uh, the alignment notch. It uses a different alignment technique. So I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. So I just want to point out a few details here before we start to... Uh, putting the carburetor, the top side back together so you know what we're, we're getting into. So a quick test I like to do before I throw a carburetor back together is I want to see how well does the slide itself here fit inside the carburetor. And you'd be surprised how many carburetors we run across that the slide gets jammed. Um, the quick test is just to drop it in the carburetor like this and I'll put my finger in and let it drop. And this one is like, like a no-brainer. It seems to work fine. I'm going to kind of rotate it a little bit. Yeah, this one's nice and loose. Uh, there's a lot of carburetors, though, where that slide will go about halfway and it'll stop. It'll get jammed. And uh, it has to do with some manufacturing variances on the slide or the carburetor body. A uh, quick solution to that would be to swap slides to different carburetors, see if they, they work better, you know, between two carbs. Other times, you might have to get in here and really clean this passage out with some, like, scotch Bright pad, get it nice and polished. Sometimes you have to go in there with some light sandpaper. And so that's a, a quick test. I want to make sure that slide will drop nice and clean in there and not go and get like hung up like halfway. Again, it, it actually happens, so I always suggest folks to check to make sure your carburetor is, is dropping clean like that. So I'm going to put the carburetor itself aside and we're going to talk about the slide a little bit real quick before we start putting things back together. Uh, so on our CV style carburetor, which stands for constant velocity, the slide is what helps control the, uh, the, uh, the flow of air. This is the original diaphragm that came out of this particular carburetor. And I went ahead and gave it an, an inspection. And the way to test the diaphragm is to kind of go around it. And I'm just gently pulling on it. And I'm looking for a pinhole or an abrasion or something of that sort. And a lot of times you'll see those kind of pinholes in uh, this area here where the diaphragm kind of meets the, the slide body. Again, if you have a bad diaphragm, we do have replacements available. They're pretty easy to install. But, you know, if the diaphragm's nice and pliable, like this one is, nice and flexible, and there's no holes or abrasions or tears in it, it can be reused. So with diaphragms, you kind of have like a 50-50 shot. You never know. So like I kind of check the top side, pulling it around. Then I'll flip it over and check the bottom side, because sometimes you'll see something on one side that you can't see on the other. And I'm just kind of gently pulling on it. Man, this diaphragm is in really good shape, so we're gonna we're gonna use it again. There's no need to change it out um, unless we have to. Uh, it's one of those parts that again, if, if it's usable, let's 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 use it again. But let's say we do have to change the diaphragm slide out. Um, we have a we have another video that shows you how to put the diaphragms on. But uh, I don't want to point out these two holes here uh, in the uh, slide uh, in case you you lose your orientation of which way the that those holes are supposed to go. Those holes face the choke plate, so. I'm going to bring in the 
carburetor back into the shot. My choke plates here where the air cleaner would be. These two holes would face. Let's take a look here. That direction. Just for just for reference. Um, it's an orientation reference, so uh, it's a heads up. But I need to put this guy back together because it has a few parts in it. The first part I'm going to put in it is my, my main slide needle here. Uh, it's a new one that came in the kit. So I'm going to take it. I'm just going to drop it in the center there. Hopefully I can get it in. All right. So it comes out the middle hole just like that. Next comes a really weird piece, and that's this, um, I call it like a top hat. It's a little plastic part here. Unfortunately, there's no replacements available for it, so you got to be very careful when you, uh, when you take it out. He just drops in like that. He helps hold that, uh, that piece in place. Finally, there's this little, like, funky-looking clip, and that little funky clip is what holds that plastic retainer in place. There's a groove down in there that this little guy pops into, so... I don't know how well you guys are going to see it on the camera, but I'm going to do my best to get it in there so you guys can see it. Oh, it's almost there. All right. I don't know if you can see that very well, but you can see how the, the ends of like the one, two, three corners of it or edges of it are under a groove there. And if I push up on my pushing on the needle here, it doesn't want to move. All right, so I'm about to drop my slide in, and a trick I like to do is I like to use a little bit of gasket sealer in this groove here where the slide makes contact, as well as on uh, this outer perimeter here of the top cap here. So I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Uh, originally, this, this thing went in dry, but I found over the years having a little bit of sealer on it helps. I'm using this old school sealer called, called Gasket Cinch here. Uh, I like it. It's kind of like rubber cementy. And uh, I like it because it goes on really thin. You can see how gloppy it is. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to use a, my pick here to apply it. Uh, you can use some other kinds of gaskets here, like RTV, but I would also use it really, really sparingly. See, I'm going to get it in that groove there. And kind of let it roll around. So all my, I'm going to work my way around the groove and uh, get blobs of this in there, just like that. It almost looks like snot, how it is, but... Uh, this is really good stuff. Um, again, old school gasket sealer. Kind of hard to find these days, but if you can get your hands on some, uh, pick it up. So it goes on really thin, but it does a great job for things like this because you can take it off relatively easy. It's a, it's like a like a rubber cement. It smells like rubber cement. It's got that. So I, I've put the gasket cinch in the groove here. It's kind of tacking up, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my slide and get some of those kind of strings out of there. I take my slide and drop it in. I'm going to put my diaphragm facing up. I have that little alignment tab there. And I'm just going to press it into that groove. And this is just going to help seal that diaphragm in the groove there. Uh, you don't have to use gas cassettes. You can use like an RTV, but you got to use it really, really, like very sparingly. Very thin, thin, thin coat. You don't want to have a ton of this stuff. And in fact, I'm going to kind of squeeze it. You can see it squishing out a little bit. It's okay. This is a very good gasket sealer. All right, the second part of this is to uh, take my top lid here. And I'm going to put a light coat on this perimeter here. Uh, same thing like with the RTV, you can use the, do the same principle here. But again, I like this stuff because it's, it's really thin and it goes on thin like that. Now, I bet you rubber cement would work too. Um, it's really similar. Just like that, I'm going to let it tack up for a minute and then I'll, I'll put the top on here. All right, so it's tacked up. My cover's been tacked up. I've gone ahead and taken my uh, my screws and put a little bit of anti-seize in the thread. Next step is to drop my spring in, and I'm just take my top cover and put it on. And you're gonna see that my top cover for this carburetor is pretty nasty and pitted. It's okay, it'll work. But uh, if you want to have something that looks a little bit better, that we do have replacement replacement lids here. Just trying to hold it in place and get. Uh, Get a screw started here. No one. That should be all I need to get it started. Same deal like with the flip. We'll go a caddy corner, kind of get your screw started, and, and snug the top on down. There we go. Two. Three. 
three, and on the last one over here. And so the whole point of the sealer is to help prevent any, uh, any vacuum leaks from happening. Okay, let me give this a snug down here. Two, three, should be four there. Four. Very good. Need that extra goo. I'm just gonna kind of mop up here. That's it for the slide. We've got two more things to do and this, uh, this carpet will be done real quick. So